I think the biggest challenge that faces uh, all academic leaders, chairs and deans in particular, is that we're dealing with a very fast moving time in higher education. There are a lot of changes that, that are going on. Uh, higher education is a very expensive commodity. It's becoming more expensive all the time. So for governments to be able to afford the, the quality of higher education that they want, and in systems where students have to pay tuition, for families to be able to afford the tuition uh, to, to have access to that level of education, that's a, that's a tremendous challenge. So deans and department chairs in particular are always feeling sandwiched between those two pressures of trying to increase the level of quality and the level of attainment, uh, increase the level of research productivity that is being uh, uh, created, and at the same time keeping costs as reasonable as possible in this very, very complex uh, system. So I think that's, uh, that's one of the, the main challenges. Uh, second of all, I the uh, change that is affecting higher education in terms of what it is that higher education is for. Are we trying to prepare uh, the citizens of the future? Are we trying to prepare people to be uh, the employees of the future, trying to guarantee them satisfying jobs? What is it that we're actually trying to accomplish? That, doesn't, that question is not answered in the same way by everyone. So being able to be responsive to the different perspectives of different stakeholders, and at the same time uh, being attentive to the needs that society has for uh, people receiving uh, uh, higher education, I think those are some of the, the very, very overwhelming challenges that deans and chairs have today. Well, one thing is that, that as uh, an organization, higher education just doesn't same, have the same organizational structure or culture that other types of uh, organizations do. If you are dealing with a military unit, if you're dealing with a corporation, those tend to be very hierarchical. And so the leadership skills that you might have in that sort of environment of uh, being very decisive, leading through command, maintaining a great deal of authority, tend not to be the sort of leadership skills that help a person become successful as a department chair or as a dean. We do more things by committees in higher education. We do more things through various group processes and through uh, uh, different uh, uh, levels and different structures within the, the organization. So we're less monolithic than those other uh, uh, cultures. And at the same time, we have uh, a lot of other ways of, uh, of making decisions, of uh, getting things done that don't really reflect what you find in other types of organizational environments. So we need to be able to teach people to lead and to have the sorts of skills that are going to help them be successful in the actual organizational culture that we have, not to try to imitate in higher education the organizational culture of the corporate world, the military world, the athletic world, uh, the legislative world. So. Well, then uh, in that sort of environment, you have to be able to build consensus. You have to be able to negotiate. You have to be able to uh, uh, collaborate with people who see the world differently from, from how you do. So you have to be able to see things from new perspectives, come to some compromise. You have to be persuasive in being an advocate for your area, listen carefully to what other people are saying, and have all of these uh, sorts of, what we sometimes call the softer skills or people skills, those tend to be more important in, in higher education so that we can build rapport, so we can develop collegiality than in other sorts of organizational environments where because of the way the hierarchy works, you can just be in command. You can declare what you want to have done. In higher education, we're more often trying to persuade people what they should do. And so as a result, those have to be the types of skills we teach people in higher education leadership programs. Not necessarily how to be as decisive as possible or how to be as authoritative as possible, but how to achieve consensus, how to negotiate, how to work with other people. There are so many different alternative leadership approaches we could talk about. Uh, I'll just mention my, my three favorites. One is, is positive academic leadership, which basically means 
focusing your attention on what's working in an organization rather than trying to solve all the problems that you perceive in areas that are not working. In other words, building on your strengths rather than constantly trying to put out fires, compensate for your weaknesses. So uh, positive uh, academic leadership tries to identify the areas of strength that a department has or a college has and move forward with those. That's the first. The second is authentic academic leadership, which asks academic leaders to identify what are for them the key principles, the values that make them a leader or that make them uh, a different human being from someone else, and to build a leadership style that reflects their own values and their own principles, not always focusing on targets and metrics and goals, but rather uh, leading through values, leading through uh, principles that uh, guide them in an ethical way towards building uh, their program in the direction they want to build. And the last is, is servant leadership in higher education, which really turns the whole traditional picture of what an academic leader is on its head. Not someone who's ruling an organization from the top, but rather serving it from, from the bottom, trying to think of what the needs are of the faculty, the staff, the students, and how you can be an effective advocate for those and to develop those needs so that our stakeholders can thrive. So you're not ruling from the perspective of uh, obtaining what you want, but asking yourself, what is it that my people need, and trying to serve those needs in the best way possible. Thank you. Appreciated the opportunity to express a few thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to, to uh, say hello to all the members of SEDU and to invite you to participate in all the programs that the uh, uh, center is, is offering, especially uh, next year's conference. It's a wonderful opportunity to get together with some colleagues, talk about some important issues, learn from international experts, and I hope to see you there. <laughs>